Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliet Lamar, and joining us today, we have Brendan Fucan. He is the CEO at They Connecta and eCanvasser. Welcome, Brendan. Thanks very much, Juliet. I'm glad to be on board. We're so happy that you're here today and, and really interested in learning more about, about what you're doing over at eCanvasser and Be Connecta. Could you go ahead and kick us off with a, a slight overview of your companies and what you do? Uh, yeah, sure. So, VConnect, uh, I started VConnect in 2012, and we built, uh, we're a software company, and we built eCanvasser.com. So, eCanvasser is a software platform for data powered voter contact political campaigns. So, what we allow customers to do, or political campaigns to do, is target voters using a CRM database, there's email communication and filtering so you can better target voters. And then we have mobile apps for when you're going, when campaigns are going door to door canvassing and for on street polling. Oh, wow. And how long have you been around? Uh, so I would have founded the company in 2012. So we're around a few years now. And then eCanvasser would have launched in 2014. Uh, we're obviously based on my uh, unusual accent. We're based in uh, Ireland. Uh, but we'd work with a lot of uh, U.S.-based campaigns. Uh, so over the past two years, since, yeah, since 2016, we would have worked with over 2,000 political campaigns, and that would have been spread across uh, 71 countries. Uh, and on this, you know, you're not just doing one thing with eCanvasser. You have you have so many different essential resources here that I'm seeing. Can you go into depth a little bit about some of the resources that you provide? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, we also have another product called Vox Video, and that's for uh, local government. Uh, so when local government are better engaging with citizens, uh, particularly if they're running, say, a smart city program, or if they have a public project that where they need to buy in from the local population, we have a product called Vox Video. So Vox is the Latin for voice, so voice, and then throwing a bit of Spanish in there with Cidio. Um And that just, it's, again, a very similar system to eCanvasser or where it lets um, cities uh, better engage with citizens. So there's a better feedback between between what's going on on the ground with citizens and uh, local government. Absolutely. And uh, and then also amongst your, your other resources that you provide is for campaign operations. You have a lot of resources here for helping people run a really great campaign. Yeah, so with eCanvasser, we obviously provide the software. And one of the things that we we saw was particularly at the local level where there's people running for school board elections or they're, they're first-time candidates and maybe they just want to make a, a better community uh, around them. Uh, they don't know a whole pile of how to actually organize a political campaign. Uh, they got involved in politics through community activism not through, uh, say, career politics, which happens at the, say, the, the next level at the state or federal level. So we developed um, quite a number of resources. So one will be our blog, and we do interviews, so there's key learning. But the main one that we focus on is something that we call Campaign Blueprint. And it gives the, the resources on how to run a field campaign, which is very close to eCanvasser's uh, positioning but also how to how to use Instagram for politics, how to use other social medias for politics, uh, how to set up a campaign website, how to write a press release, uh, and other other areas of uh, a campaign which which is quite which is needed uh, to run a successful, i.e., a winning campaign. And how much are you seeing digital campaigning triumphing over you know boots on the ground type type engagement? Uh, that's a really good question. So if I was speaking with you maybe three years ago, I would have said digital campaigning is starting to take over a lot uh, of the uh, the campaign resources. 
But over the past, say, 12 months, 18 months maybe, um, what we've seen is a shift to more of a blended approach. So they're doing the -the on-the-ground work, knocking on doors, talking to people, um, but then likewise, they're, they're, they're doing the digital. So where where I saw where we've seen really interesting uh, work on this was was the Hillary Clinton campaign. Um, they used very in, and other campaigns have been doing this. Is they've been using um, AOR. So uh, I think the, probably the best example of AOR from a kind of a a small kind of context or a kind of a popular context would be uh, you know the Pokemon Go app. Um, so they used augmented reality and the Clinton campaigns and other campaigns arranged uh, community meetings near the POCUS stops. And I thought that was a really good example of how campaigns are starting to use, again, very limited, very early stage of augmented reality apps like Pokemon Go into um, into their digital. So it's blending the digital world with um, the real world, say, on the ground campaigning with and speaking to voters, uh, which ultimately wins the vote. Whoever, whoever would have thought that Pokemon Go would be a political player? <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised as well. Um, but uh, I, I suppose it's like anything else with Facebook. Uh, when that first started, that wasn't really be, that wasn't being used by political campaigns. And then we've seen what's happened over the past twelve months with Facebook. Uh, they've really mm-hmm. earned a lot of money from political campaigns. Oh, absolutely. And so, when you're running a political pa- campaign, there's going to be so much data. And I love that eCanvasser offers some data management. Can you go into detail a little bit about about how those are utilized for your service? Sure. So um, voter data, particularly in the U.S., um, you can you can buy uh, lists of vendors, off the data, data vendors. So there's quite a lot of information that uh, political campaigns have access to. So what eCanvasser does is you upload that. Uh, that voter file in an Excel or CSV format. We map it out using a Google Maps API. And then likewise, you can filter down uh, based on either just various custom fields that you have, whether it's ethnicity, uh, voting history, age, uh, whether someone's employed or not, or a whole host of other uh, data fields. And it allows a more of a targeted approach to Look, should you be going out, um, say you want to go out to speak with all the Democrats in the ages, between the ages of 30 and 40 uh, within a certain geographical area who are currently in a full-time employment. And that's what eCanvasser lets you do, and that syncs then to a mobile app. So it allows for very targeted uh, conversations on the ground. And... I know that on your website, you have a whole section on the GDPR of 2018. Um, Give us a little insight into into how eCanvasser is is involved with that and and what steps you have within your platform. Yes, so uh, GDPR, being a European-based company, we we obviously had to comply with it based on Mm -hmm. where we're we're located. Um, So we decided, look, we'll, we'll we'll take a good approach to this legislation where instead of just ticking a box, of updating our privacy policies and our terms and conditions and just doing the, the, the basic approach, we decided to let's take turn this into an advantage for us. And we reconfigured our product um, so that you can do anonymized canvassing, um, you can anonymize your data set, there's e-signature for capturing consent with, when you're on the doorstep, uh, there's a privacy dashboard which allows uh, campaigns to map out the types of data that they're collecting and that links to the legal basis of why campaigns are collecting this type of information so that uh, if there is an audit from um, a data protection commissioner's office that uh, there's a a full trail of of compliance in terms of what data they're collecting, why they're collecting it and then displaying and showing uh, the consent of when it was collected, and then obviously storing it in in that legally uh, compliant way. So uh, we've taken elements of a privacy by design. So when you're uh, developing a software feature, not only do you do you work out in terms of what's the impact to, to customers, but what's the impact to um, to the GDP, to our GDPR compliance. 
So, um, so we, w- we certainly uh, put a lot of uh, effort, uh, investment as well, uh, not just from a development resource point of view, but from a marketing resource point of view, and then just obviously getting the compliance in. We would have worked with um, data protection uh, specialists over the past 15 months uh, to get ready for GDPR. That's fantastic, and that's you know such a such a good thing to have on your side for people who are who are using this platform because security is you know you're handling a lot of sensitive information when you're thinking about how people are voting. Um, so that's that's really great that you are leading the way in that regard. Yeah, and I like that's that's a very good point that you made that we we do have a sense of uh, the importance of our software and uh, not to kind of slam any other kind of software. We're not just a random project management app or a CRM tool. We're a product that is directly linked to the democratic process. And we take that very seriously, that we're handling that voter data, that we do it in a, a way that's uh, right to not just our customers who are paying us, the political campaigns, but to, to voters themselves. And what we'd like to do is we we'd get to, we want to get to the stage where uh, voters will want to engage with a political campaign that's using the canvasser so that they know that the campaign is taking their data seriously. They're not just writing down information in a locally stored Excel spreadsheet or putting it on a random Dropbox account, uh, but that they're taking the time to research the best place to store their data and that they have processes in place to manage that voter data so that the the safeguards are in place that that data isn't mis- misused. And we feel that we've put a lot of efforts into becoming that uh, data manager. That's fantastic. So getting into you know, the user experience, how it all works, um, you know, what do you need to get set up? I guess, what is the pricing for setup and what do you need to get? Uh, so you can be set up in minutes on eCanvasser. So once you have your data, um, you can upload that, it's mapped out, invite your team users, um, and then you can just start get going. Um, there's a one-click onboarding, so uh, you can download the app and you're ready to go within within minutes. Uh, we've put a lot of effort into the user experience. Uh, it's all done, say, with material design, so it looks very much like a, a Google product, um, and that just gives it a level of familiarity with users, so that, that just uh, improves the, uh, the user workflow so that they can concentrate on getting what they need uh, done. And uh, and your pricing really works by, by voter size instead of how many people are helping you on your campaign, from what I'm reading here. Uh, yeah, precisely. So we're, our pricing model is based on the number of voters that you upload. Uh, it's done on a banded model. So uh, if you're at a very local level and say you're, you're just running for town council or whatever it might be, you're only going to be targeting a couple of thousand people you can get going on eCanvasser for under $50. Um, and then as you scale up, say, to the state level or other levels after that, uh, the pricing increases. But uh, we went with the, um, with the number of voters rather than, say, the number of users. Because if you're a campaign, a small-level campaign or a state-level campaign, your volunteers are an important asset. And we didn't want to impact on that. Uh, we wanted to provide a level of um, assuredness for for our customers. So they didn't want to be messing with, oh, do we have five users or 10 canvassers out? We just wanted to let them know that, look, they'll be paying $600 for their three-month campaign. Uh, so it gives them um, confidence in the system. And what do I need as far as devices uh, for eCanvasser to work, and in what countries does it work in? Yeah, so our mobile app um, work on iOS and Android, and then our dashboard is a browser-based dashboard, so that works uh, across all all browsers, and it's mobile optimized, so you can use it on your device too, uh, on your mobile devices too. And then we built um, eCanvasser to be very flexible. It's probably one of the benefits of living on a small island. Uh, mm-hmm. That you have to you have to think global uh, from day one, um, and that's something that a lot of Irish companies would push for um, because you 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 can't you can't look at your home market. If we were to look at our home market, that's like 500 races, a thousand races max over a four year period. In the US, it's a million races over the same period. So uh, to be able to compete on a global basis, you have to. Uh, 
build a very flexible uh, software, one that can work with all types of data. So again, as I said, in the US, you have a whole treasure trove of data. But if you work in mainland Europe, they don't have a fully formed data for our voter file with names and addresses. They might just have addresses. Or in Northern Europe, they would only have street information. They have nothing uh, personally identifiable to voters. Um, so again, you have to build the technology to, to cater to, those, to all those types of um, data sources. Uh, but that being said, we've worked in just over 71 countries to date. Wow. Well, this is, this is such a great product and such a wonderful thing to add into, into any campaign. Um, what is the best way for people to, they want to come check out a free demo or get started? What's the best way to connect and how can they follow you through any social media platform? Sure. So people, if they want to have a look around the website, I think we have a, quite a good website, it's ecanvasser.com, so E-C- a N V A S S E R dot com. Uh, there's a two week free trial um, to try out the product, or as you can set up uh, some kind of ch- or a demo. And you can follow us at eCanvasser app on Twitter, and we also have a, a YouTube channel, so you can just check out uh, eCanvasser. That is fantastic, Brendan. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today on Future Tech Podcast and share this wonderful product, and hopefully really get people the help they need when they're campaigning. No, thank you very much for having uh, having me, Juliet. That is Brendan Finucan. He is the CEO at VConnecta and eCanvasser. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Juliet Lamar with Future Tech Podcast. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.